Hello everyone, thanks for joining me today. My name is Charles from Sprouted Web, and today I'm going to cover some website performance basics, um, and in particular, how to speed up an Elementor website. Uh, this technique is going to require no coding, it's going to require no expensive plugins, and it's going to help everyone, um, whether or not you're already using a performance plugin. Um, not going to really matter. The basic principle is the lighter your site is and the less requests uh, to your server it makes, um, it's just going to help your site regardless. Before I get started, I want to give a big shout out to the entire Elementor community um, and actually Ben Pines and the entire team of Elementor. Um, you guys have done an outstanding job building a super cool page builder that obviously brought this entire community together. Um, and I really wasn't expecting as big of a response as I did on my poll regarding this performance topic. Um, I know historically performance questions are hard to get answered on this forum just because a lot of them aren't necessarily Elementor related. Uh, so for this tutorial, I'm actually going to not only optimize the Elementor site live and just kind of do it on the fly, um, but this entire presentation was also made using Elementor instead of PowerPoint. Um, so why did we make this tutorial? I wanted to help users understand the fundamentals regarding website performance because um, there's a lot of you out there that may be using a plugin already but uh, may not understand how to read a waterfall chart which is extremely helpful in understanding um, just how your website behaves and what scripts is loading every time you try to load a particular page. Um, I also wanted to show a technique that doesn't absolutely rely on um, you know performance plugins such as WP Fastest Cache um, Autopomize, Fast Velocity, Minify, WP Rocket, Swift, and there's a lot of other ones. Um, but this particular plugin, whether or not um, you actually are using that, this technique will still. Now, that being said, I want to make a note that caching plugins are still super helpful, um, especially for a lot of those users that are on hosting plans that don't already have a caching or um, CDN set up on the server level. And the cool thing about this technique is even if you're already using a performance plugin, it doesn't really matter because this technique will still help you. Um, by making your site more lightweight, this will just help those plugins work better. And I think you guys will find that your website load times will go, you know, get a little bit better, if not a lot better for some of you guys. And I would love to see some of the before and afters in the comments below, including um, you know, whether or not you guys are using a performance plugin and which one you guys are using. I'd love to gather some of that data. Um, a big part of this tutorial as well is I'm going to show you guys some basic benchmark stats because I'd love for you guys just to have a basic understanding of how lightweight Elementor and um, Astra is. But on top of that, um, I really want to show you guys some of the basic scripts that is being called and loaded on every page regardless of not, um, you know, if it's a blank canvas even, there's scripts that are being loaded. Um, and we're going to show you how to eliminate a lot of that stuff to make your sites run faster. I also want to help some of you users avoid cache reception, which is my weird way of saying that there's a lot of people that have multiple levels of cache. So they're using a performance plugin, then they're using Cloudflare uh, for their SSL, and that already has its own caching system as well. Uh, and then on top of that, they may already be on a hosting provider that has caching at the server level. And so oftentimes with these type of users, if you make an update in Elementor on the back end, you'll notice you just have to clear a lot of different you know, plug-in caches, um, and there might be a lag time on that update being reflected on the front end. So um, obviously we want to avoid the number of plugins that we're using for everything. And sometimes when you have multiple performance plugins at the same time, it actually makes your site slower. Uh, you know, an analogy that I love is if you have five children all fighting over the same cookie, at the end of the day, no one's going to get the full cookie, right? Uh, you're just going to have a lot of crumbs everywhere and a mess to clean up. And it's going to be a lot of headache down the road. So why does site speed matter? Well, for one, no one really likes a slow website. And so slow websites are going to lead to higher bounce rates on your website. And when that happens, it can actually lead to lower search engine rankings, which is not a good thing. Um, I'm not going to really take the time to cover a lot of SEO fundamentals and all that. There's a lot of other resources online. Um, there's a lot of other groups on Facebook that will help you out with that. Um, ultimately, what I do uh, want to cover is how all this kind of ties together, right? So uh, the primary role of the search engine is to deliver the most relevant content for a given search term. 
And Google and other search engines use a variety of ways uh, and different ranking signals to help determine uh, what search results are the most relevant. Um, and balance rates is definitely a big part of that, right? So GT metric scores and page speed scores don't directly impact your rankings, but whenever you have slower sites that result in higher bounce rates, this signal tells search engines that whenever users come into your website for a given search term, they're not necessarily finding what they're looking for, and so they're bouncing off. And when this happens enough times, um, your search engine rankings were actually going to drop for that search term. And ultimately, regardless of all that, when you have a faster site, your website visitors are just happier. Um, no one likes to wait 30 seconds for a site to load, and no one will. I mean, most people are just going to click off and leave your site, and that's not a good first and one thing I wanted to cover as well is how is the site speed measured? And site speed is not a letter grade. It's actually measured in time, right? So instead of focusing on the GT metric scores, this particular tutorial is going to help us identify and fix underlying performance issues of the site, which is then going to help this load time and site speed value go way down, which in turn I think you guys will find a lot of the GT metric scores will take care of themselves. So instead of focusing on um, the letter grade, I'm going to go focus on site time. And in fixing those issues, the page speed score and my slow scores will naturally go up. And uh, you guys will see that as we do the live demo uh, in this tutorial. Now, very briefly, I want to cover you know ultimately what impacts the website's load time. And there's a lot of different variables. Um, but ultimately, there's four factors that um, really impact the site's final load time, right? So that's going to be the number of items that's being loaded on each page, uh, the file sizes, your hosting environment, and how quickly your server can process these requests and respond back to it. Um, so it's basically just the number of things you're trying to load, how big those things are, um, what type of environment they're being loaded in, how fast you can respond to your website or browser request for that. Now before we move on to the next part of the tutorial, in my opinion the fun part, um, there's a couple of points that I want to make sure everyone understands. So when we're talking about a website's performance and load time, ultimately and naturally your hosting plan and the type of hosting that you have matters. Um, I can't tell you how many times I see on a daily basis people that you know, complain about Elementor and how fast their site runs, but I mean, they're trying to do a super budget hosting plan that doesn't even run the latest version of PHP. Which brings me to my next point, and that the PHP version that you are currently using on your WordPress site definitely matters. So back in December 2018, a lot of you guys are going to remember that there were two big updates that happened. For one, PHP 5.6 was discontinued, and for two, WordPress 5.0 came out. And with 5.0 came uh, the Gutenberg editor, as well as a lot of updates on the security and performance side of things uh, in the code of WordPress. So our friends at Kinsta put together a really cool performance benchmarking test. And in their test, what they did was they used a WordPress 5.0 site, and they tested it uh, on an environment running PHP 5.6, and they did it all the way up to PHP 7.3. And long story short, what they found was that WordPress sites running 7.0 or higher on average could handle up to three times more requests than websites running 5.6. And so in terms of helping your website run smoother, more securely, uh, as well as uh, helping some of the performance times, um, I would definitely check what version of PHP, which brings me to my third point. Just because you have a great GT metric score, doesn't necessarily mean your website is fast. And it's totally possible, especially with people using you know, performance plugins, you'll notice, um, it's totally possible to have good scores, but still a slow page time. Um, so this tutorial, what we're gonna do is take a look at how to minimize this fully load time. We're gonna take a look at how to minimize how large your website's page is. And we're going to especially take a look at how to minimize the number of requests to your server that is happening every time someone tries to load your website page. Awesome guys, we finally made it to the fun part of the tutorial. So in this section, we're going to cover how to identify and eliminate those unnecessary plugin scripts uh, and WordPress scripts that are loaded every time someone tries to load one of your website pages. 
Now, before beginning this tutorial, please perform a full backup of your site. Uh, and ideally, you guys will have a staging server or a dev server uh, or version, um, and we'll be working on that instead of working on the live version of your site. Uh, but if you are working on a live version of your site, no worries. Uh, what you can do is uh, with Elementor and um, WordPress, just duplicate a page, create a test page, uh, and clone over, let's say, your home page or another page you'd love to optimize. And using that version, you can follow along uh, this tutorial and uh, test it out without risking breaking your, your primary site. And of course, I want all of you guys to use this moment and take a breath, take a deep breath, and know that between the Elementor community and our Sprouted Web plugin, which I'll tell you more about in the next uh, segment, that you guys have 24-7 support. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask the community, and we're all here for you. So as previously mentioned, my team is Sprouted Web, and what we do is provide 24-7 support for WordPress users around the world. And very recently, some of you may already know, we have a uh, support plugin that was officially accepted into the WordPress repository. And so this is available to any WordPress user around the world. All you have to do is go into your plugins area, and when you go to add new, you can type in Sprouted Web. Boom, there we are. Once you install it and activate it, what you'll then notice is you have a new tab here called 24-7 WordPress support. You'll also have this little green button right here. So all you gotta do is click that and you can connect with us. And literally within a minute, uh, if you guys have any questions during this tutorial, you can hop on there and ask any one of my team any of the questions that you may have. And they'll be able to help you through this process. Awesome, so now let's take a moment and talk about GT Metrics. Uh, GT Metrics is a really cool website performance tool that a lot of you already know about. Um, we're actually going to use this in our tutorial today to analyze our demo site. Um, a cool thing about GT Metrics is it shows both your page speed and Y slow scores, but it also shows their waterfall chart. And what a waterfall chart does, it shows you all the scripts, files, images, everything that is loaded every time someone loads that particular page. Um, and this is super useful to understand, uh, and it will help you identify some of the files and scripts that are being loaded when they don't have to be. And before we get into that, what um, I would love to do, because there's a variety of testing tools. I want to go over some of the differences between GT Metrics, PageSpeed Insights, Pingdom Tools, and Web Page Test. And those are the, the most popular tools being used right now. Uh, and I'm sure some people don't even realize there's a lot of differences in how these four platforms actually um, analyze and, uh, I guess, test content. Uh, so the first thing is what they call test regions. And these are servers located across the world where these particular tools will ping your website from. Um, GT Metrics has seven test regions. Uh, Pingdom uses seven. Web Page Test uh, does, has 50. Um, so if you really want to test from some more obscure locations, you can. Um, and then Page Site or uh, Page Speed Insights um, is possibly geolocated. But the big thing about PageSpeed Insights, it requires enough traffic volume for them to actually even be able to display um, a lot of their stats, right? Uh, next part is how each platform shows and displays scores and recommendations, because they all really look at page speed and why it's slow, but they calculate these in different ways, right? So for GT Metrics, they actually base their um, calculations off of the page speed and Y slow algorithm, but they look at 27 page speed recommendations and 18 Y slow recommendations. Uh, and all these come from basically the Google API, right? Pingdom is most likely based on page speed, but they have 11 general recommendations uh, that help them generate their own results um, for your website. Web page test only does six. Uh, and then PageSpeed, uh, PageSpeed Insights from Google, um, they basically have like 20 different factors that they look at in terms of audits and opportunities, right? 
So the kind of the key takeaway there is all of these tools work differently. They have their own pros and cons, um, but take each with a grain of salt. I think what's more important is for you to test your site across different platforms to get a general understanding of how your site works. And the cool thing about this tutorial is regardless of what system you use, once again, whenever you minimize the number of server requests uh, and your page size and et cetera, um, your scores can only get better across all the systems. Okay, so let's go ahead and cover some of the basics of running a GT metric scan and how to read a waterfall chart. Uh, and for this particular part of the tutorial, we're going to be referencing GT metrics blog posts titled how to read a water chart for beginners. Um, in their blog posts, they give a lot of really cool information and technical details of how their system works, but um, I'm going to give you the Cliff Notes version of that and just cover the particular errors that we're going to be using in this tutorial. Uh, first thing is once you run a GT metric scan, and we'll do that in just a moment, um, we're going to take a look at the waterfall results. And what a waterfall chart does is it shows you whenever a vid visitor loads a particular website page, all the files that your website loads. Um, and so you're going to have five columns. And the first column is going to be a list of all the file names, uh, as well as the scripts that your website's trying to load every time a visitor views that page. Next to it, you're going to see the status code. So that'll tell you whether or not the file was loaded successfully. Uh, then you'll see the file origin. Uh, next to it is a more important column, and that's going to tell you the file size. And so using this column, we can quickly identify uh, larger files that may be slowing your website down. And then lastly, the fifth column is going to be the load time breakdown. And this is going to be a cool area where if you hover over the file name, GT Metrics will show you the technical details on how that file is actually being loaded. So I'm going to take this moment to uh, head over to GT Metrics's blog post. And as you can see, their documentation is fairly extensive. Um, I'm just going to skim down towards the bottom where they cover the actual load time breakdowns because um, this is actually some cool information that will help you diagnose whether or not it's your server that's loading a file slowly um, or if there's some other uh, issue um, or step that's causing things to not perform as they should be. Um, first thing is if you look at this particular example, there's a teal box right here. And this bar is called the DNS lookup bar. Um, basically, before a connection is made to your hosting server, your host name actually needs to be resolved. Um, fancy term for whenever someone goes to yourdomain.com, that domain name is basically pinging the IP address of your hosting server. And this is the DNS lookup time. Next is going to be a light green box. And this is the connecting time. So once a visitor comes to your site and they request to you know, view a particular page, this is the time required for your client's browser and your hosting server to form that initial connection. So if you have a super slow uh, hosting server or um, even one that you have a lot of website visitors on right now, like maybe a traffic spike, um, this particular uh, variable can actually take a little bit more time uh, than normal. With sending time, this is the time it takes for a user's browser to send a request uh, to your server. Um, not really a factor uh, in most instances. Uh, what I really like to look at, though, is the next two, so the purple and the gray bars, so the waiting and the receiving time. The waiting time is the time spent for your hosting server to generate a response. Um, and what this is, is, let's say someone goes to your homepage and it needs to load a particular style sheet. The time it takes for your server to say, cool, um, I recognize that I need to load this, uh, now let me respond, that is the waiting time. Now the time for that file to actually download and be displayed to the user, that is the receiving time. And so if you have a large file like a video or an uncompressed or optimized image, uh, this bar is normally a lot longer. Uh, this can also be... Um, a hint that maybe a file is taking longer to load because of either uh, you hitting bandwidth limits or there's a lot of users downloading the same file at the same time. Awesome, so now that we've covered that, and thanks for your patience because that is officially one of the 
longest parts of this presentation. Um, I wanted to cover some baselines and my benchmarks that I'm using for this demo. Uh, for my hosting provider, I'm using WP Engine, and a lot of you already know about them, but for me, they're easily one of the top two hosting providers for WordPress sites. And this is due to a combination of factors. Um, one, their hosting framework is actually based on Amazon and Google Cloud. So not only are they cloud-based, but they're using solid-state storage at the server level, so all your data is being transmitted super quickly. Um, I've seen a lot of sites instantly half their load time simply by migrating over to a better hosting framework. Um, what I also love about them is they natively include free SSL for all of your websites. Um, they have a content delivery network or CDN that is already natively integrated. They have a caching framework that's already integrated at the server level, so you actually don't even need to use a caching plugin because they already have this set up on their server. Uh, but when I have to compare them to other hosting providers, what really puts them over the edge uh, is their support. So they provide 24-7 support through their chat system, um, and anytime I've ever had any issues hosting related, um, I've been instantly connected with someone in less than a minute, and there have been times where they've actually logged into my WordPress dashboard and were able to fix things on my site. Uh, so support, performance, all the things I look for in a good host, um, it's there. Uh, and in particular, what I really like about them too is um, they're fully compliant and already integrated and updated to PHP 7.2, uh, which is a big deal because there's a lot of hosting providers that are still running 5.6. And as you remember from the early part in this tutorial, that is not a good thing. Um, for my theme, I'm using Astra, and a lot of you guys are already familiar with Astra. Uh, it's one of the most well known, um, I guess, lightweight. Uh, themes for WordPress, and it works great with Elementor. My builder that I'm using, of course, is Elementor, and I'm using version 2.5.3. And over the past like two days that I've taken to make this tutorial, that's already been updated like three times. Uh, but in all fairness to the Elementor team, I wanted to um, perform a benchmark and baseline test using the latest version that is available up to this date. So when I did my baseline and my first GT metric scan. Um, what I like to do is, when I do baselines, do what I call a true baseline. So the, at this moment, the only plugin that I have installed on the entire site is Elementor. And you'll see in a moment why this is actually critical in getting a true baseline. Um, basically, plugins load a bunch of different scripts and, and resources on a lot of pages, and so it could actually impact your final load times and your total number of server requests. So as of you know this particular moment, the only plugin installed is Elementor. And like I said, I'm using Astra, but more importantly, the only theme that I have installed is Astra. So I deleted everything else uh, on my entire server. In this moment in time, I have Astra and I have Elementor. And in terms of the settings uh, on the back end, um, it's a fresh install of WordPress. It's running PHP 7.2 and WordPress 5.1. So it's literally updated fully, um, up to date on all fronts, and we're running the latest versions of everything. So now, when I run my first GT metric scan, this is going to be on my home page of the demo. Um, this is currently set to the Elementor uh, blank canvas template. So there is literally a blank white screen with no elements. I don't have a navigation, nothing. It's a blank white screen. So I'm going to run a GT Metro scan on a blank screen on a fresh install with just Elementor and Astra on it. And when I do that, this is what I came up with. So obviously I expect the page speed and why slow scores be great because there's nothing on this page and the load time should be great. So this is actually a pretty fast load time. Um, it's actually under half a second and it better be because there's no content on the page, right? But you'll notice that the total page size for a blank page, there's 81.1 kilobytes and there's already 14 requests being made to the server every time someone tries to go to this blank page. When I take a look at the waterfall chart, you guys will actually see the scripts that are trying to be loaded. And when I take a close look at it, I mean, it's just some basic CSS files, some JavaScript files, um, Elementor icons. Um, there is WP embed JavaScript, uh, the emoji. And the thing is, is this is just by default what WordPress and Elementor tries to load, even on a blank page. Okay, and this is an important concept. Because uh, I want you guys to take a look at this baseline, okay? 
Now, obviously, if this was my actual live page, there's no reason why on a blank page I would need any of this. Uh, and so by getting rid of all that, you would inc instantly increase you know, your load time and all that. Now, here's what I did. I wanted to simulate what happens when, of course, we, add, we start adding plugins. Like in the course of building a website, naturally, you're going to add plugins. So um, what I did was I just installed you know, eight plugins. And I'm sure a lot of you guys know eight plugins is almost nothing compared to the average WordPress site. Um, but I added Elementor, I added Jet Elements from Coco Blocks. Um, just to use them as an example, I have also added WooCommerce and their Stripe Gateway. And then what I did is, is I perform another GT metric scan on that same blank canvas page. Okay. And what you'll notice is even on the blank page, because I have these plugins activated, look at what happens to my GT metrics report. My load time quadrupled almost. So now we're looking at 1.2 seconds with the total page size of 236 kilobytes and 36 requests on a blank page. And I'm sure you guys are going, well, how the heck is that possible? When we take a look at the waterfall chart, um, we begin to see the results of adding all of these plugins. So right towards the top, I start seeing things from BB Press, which is our forum plugin. I see all the Jet plugins, the elements, the reviews, the tabs, all of them are loading their own CSS files and instantly blogging the site down. There's no reason why I would need any of that because it's a blank page again. Jet tabs, jQuery, WooCommerce is adding a bunch of different JavaScript files here that's really slow. And of course, since all this is on a blank page, once I start actually adding content to this, um, it all just got a lot worse, right? So, um, and I'll show you guys on our test page in just a moment. Um, we just built a super basic page out. And when I run a scan, here are the metrics that I got, right? So page speed score of F, fu fully load time of 4.9 seconds. Total page size, 11.3 megabytes, 71 requests to the server anytime someone tries to load this page, okay? Now, a lot of you that are already familiar with how to optimize websites, there's a couple of variables that instantly jump out at you, uh, despite these horrible scores, right? So this total page size, that's massive. And um, 70 requests, uh, 71 requests, that's quite a bit. Um, and 4.9 seconds isn't super bad. I've seen a lot of sites with much slower load times, but this is definitely not a fast loading website at this particular time. Okay, so now let's go ahead and pull up the actual page that we'll be optimizing today. And this is the test page that I've set up. And as you can see, it's a very simple Elementor page setup. I have a banner across the top. I have a section with an image and some text. And another section with some uh, text and an image and I have a YouTube video embed at the bottom okay and since I've added some content I'm just gonna go ahead and refresh my GT vetcher scan on this page and while that's running um, I'm gonna go ahead and point out some details of the scan right so it's fetching the site now um, you'll see that the default test server region is set to Vancouver Canada but you can actually select and customize where they're testing your site from using one of their test server regions. So right now the test is just wrapping up. Awesome. So taking a look at my results, you'll notice page speed score of F, Y slow score of C, fully load time of 7.2 seconds with a total page size of 28.2 megabytes, which is very large. Um, and the requests to the server every time someone tries to visit this page is 71 requests, okay? And you'll notice towards the bottom of this, they have different tabs. And this is where GT Metrics will provide you with specific recommendations on how to improve your site's performance. And so, for example, when I look at deferred parsing of JavaScript, um, I noticed that a lot of the scripts being pulled up are from the YouTube video that I embedded at the bottom of the page. In terms of functionality, I'll make a note too that the video is not autoplaying and it's located at the very bottom. So when a user first comes to this site, they don't even see the video. So for all 
practical reasons, there's no reason why I even need this JavaScript to load. And I'll show you in just a moment using Elementor how to optimize for that. What I'm going to take a look at next to really dig deeper into what's causing um, this load time of 7.2 seconds is the waterfall chart that we just covered. And if we look at this waterfall chart, you'll notice all the scripts and files that is being loaded and requested from the server once I loaded this page. And you'll notice right here we have two spikes. And this one's being caused by uh, the image of the puppy that I have. It's 21.3 megabytes, which is um, definitely something we're going to want to optimize. And I have another image here uh, that's at 1.7 megabytes. And one more here that's uh, at 4.1 megabytes. In particular, this image on this test caused a six, or it took 6.24 seconds to load. Um, and this image is the banner at the top, but th those 6.2 seconds out of the 7.2 seconds, I mean, that's a, a, a massive chunk of that. So that's one thing that we're also going to want to optimize in the next step. Now, when it comes to optimizing um, the images on our site, there's a variety of ways we can do that. There's a lot of plugins that I'm sure a lot of you guys are already familiar with. Some of our favorites to use, um, my top favorite is Short Pixel. Uh, they do a fantastic job uh, in compressing a lot of the image sizes, and they do a, a better job than a lot of the plugins I've tested. Um, Smush works well as, um, as well, but with this particular plugin, the free version is very limited, um, and so normally um, I tend to kind of avoid um, this particular plugin. Uh, Imageify is another great one as well as the EWWW Image Optimizer. Um, for this particular demo, um, I'm going to be using Short Pixel. Um, but first, what I'm going to be doing is uh, introducing you guys to another plugin that's going to help us minimize the number of scripts and unneeded files from every page. Uh, this is a free plugin that's available in the WordPress repository, and it's called Asset Cleanup. So what I'm going to do is first go to my plugins page, and let's go ahead and type in asset cleanup. And I'll show you which plugin to install. So this one right here is uh, my favorite one, uh, the PageSpeed Booster version. There's a couple of other plugins that do a really good job as well. Like this one right here from Webcraftic um, is also a solid one. Um, one of the big things that I look for when I have to choose between different plugins is how frequently that plugin is kept up to date. So when I look at the last updated um, details of these plugins, you know, four months ago, three months ago, these developers for Asset Cleanup really do a great job on keeping their plugin up to date. So this one was just updated 15 hours ago. Um, and it is compatible with WordPress 5.1. And that's another thing that's really important when you're looking at installing new plugins, is you'll notice with these other um, plugins, these haven't even been really tested with the latest version of 5.1. So for all we know, they uh, may still have issues or bugs they haven't had a chance to work out yet. Um, luckily, this is one that I've tested a lot across a lot of different sites, so I know it works very well. Um, and it's a free plugin. So I'm just going to go ahead and install it. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and activate it. Once you do that, um, what you'll want to do is go to the plugin settings page because by default, they don't actually display a lot of the WordPress um, default styles and files that we're going to want to optimize. So, what I'm going to do is go to settings for this plugin. And you'll notice um, right towards the bottom of this tab, you'll say it says hide WordPress core files from the asset list. And this by default actually is enabled. Um, I already went ahead and disabled it. And you can click update all settings. Awesome. So now that that is completed, let me show you what that did for us. When I go to our page that we're going to optimize, I'm going to go ahead and click Edit Page and not edit with Elementor quite yet.
when I edit this page, and it doesn't really matter if you're using um, the newest uh, block editor or if you're using um, Elementor with Classic Editor, when you scroll down towards this page's settings, you'll notice a new field. It's called Asset Cleanup CSS and JavaScript Manager. And what this area is going to show you is for this specific page, all the files and scripts that are being loaded. Okay, and it breaks it down by what plugin uh, and what theme and all that. So it's all organized in here. Okay, so there's all the things for Jet Tabs plugin. And this is all being loaded on this page, okay? WooCommerce. So there's a lot of them on this particular page, right? So what we're going to do before I start changing any of those features is first I'm going to go ahead and pull up this particular page, okay? And this is a habit that I've just gotten into just after practicing with a lot of sites. Whenever I develop a site in Elementor, I like to keep a good um, understanding and sometimes I even make notes. Uh, but for each section of the page, I like to understand and know what plugin I'm using for that section. Um, luckily for this demo, I'm not using any third party plugins uh, for like custom um, content templates and section templates and stuff like that. I'm just using the free version of Elementor and the widgets that come with it. And um, so for that reason, I already know that there's no reason for anything from Croco Blocks or the Jet plugins that I have installed to be loading on this page. Another thing that um, I like to make a note of is even though WooCommerce is installed on the site, you'll notice it's not implemented yet. So I don't have any products. I don't have um, any cart widgets. I don't have any products or any of that referenced on this page. So for, again, all practical reasons, there should be no WooCommerce files that are being loaded on this page either, okay? And before I get started on optimizing this, let's first just go ahead and I'm gonna pull up, this is the before results of this page, okay? Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to the page editor um, and just knowing what we know from this page now, Right? I'm going to begin optimizing and removing scripts that I just don't need on this page. So um, I'm not using BBPress at all. So here I'm going to click unload on this page. Okay, They have a couple of other options here as well. So if you just don't need it at all, you can say unload everywhere. Okay, um, There's also unload on all pages on this particular page type. Okay, And you can also say I want to load it on this page, but not on any other page. Okay, um, for this particular setup, I'm just going to unload it because I don't need it on this page in particular. And um, since it's a demo site, I don't really have any other pages that I have a form set up on. So I'm going to disable that. I'm also going to disable the BB Press editor because, again, I don't need it. And these are now all the things that Elementor um, loads for this particular page. Okay. Now, just as a general practice, I don't like to mess with anything elements related because it's a page builder system I'm actively using on this page. Uh, and so, because I don't want to cause any errors or issues with Elementor, I'm just going to leave all that alone. I'm just going to scroll right on past it. Okay. And now I have Jet Elements for Elementor. Again, as I told you guys before, I don't need anything from Jet Elements or plugins at all. So, anything that's related to CrocoBlox, or Jet Elements, I'm going to disable on this page. Here's um, all the files being loaded from the Jet Reviews plugin. I'm also going to unload that. Here are all the files from the Jet Tabs plugin. I'm going to unload that as well. And also everything from WooCommerce, because I don't need any of this either. Okay. And um, I know a lot of you guys are already using caching plugins. So before you do any of this, first off, I want you guys to make sure to disable any caching plugins, performance plugins that you guys are actively using right now. And that way when you guys make these changes, you guys will actively be able to see the results on the front end. Okay. And I'll also point out, without doing this step, right, even if you are using a performance or a caching plugin, you're basically just masking all of this crap that's being loaded on the back end. So by disabling all this and then running your caching plugin, it's only going to help your performance even get better. 
Now, as I scroll down even more, I notice um, some CSS and JavaScript files being pulled from Astra. And again, I'm going to leave that alone, um, except for right here. This is a portion of the Astra theme that's actually referencing WooCommerce. And on this particular page, I'm not going to need that either. So I'm going to get rid of that as well. Um, as I scroll down, you'll see external, and these are um, a lot of the global styles that are being loaded. I'm not going to mess with anything Elements related. I am using Google Fonts, so I'm going to leave that alone. jQuery, I'll leave alone. But I don't need this WooCommerce inline style sheet because I'm not using WooCommerce on this page. Um, here is the WordPress core section, and for the most part, I do like to leave this alone. Um, there are a couple of things here that you can disable, though. So, like for example, right here, the jQuery migrate. Um, this particular script, um, this is what helps a lot of older sites with older plugins uh, be a lot more compatible with the newer JavaScript systems. So if you're running everything, um, you know, everything you're running is up to date, then this is not really an issue for most people. Uh, you can try unloading this. If it breaks things, just go ahead and swap this back. Uh, and you should be good to go. As I scroll down in this chart, you'll notice right here, WP block library. I'm gonna disable this because I'm not using Gutenberg and this is the style sheet that they like to pull from for a lot of Gutenberg elements. And I'm also not really using anything um, with the WP embed side of things as well. So I'm gonna disable that as well. I'm gonna go ahead and update my page. Cool, my page has been uh, updated. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and let's pull up this page. Awesome. Let's see if it's, all right, cool, there we go. And now that that is loaded, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just go ahead and um, refresh my GT metrics scan. Dude. Right on. So it's generating this report. What you'll notice is I still have a page speed score of an F, but you notice my fully loaded time is already massively um, decreased. And the number of requests to the server has gone from 71 to 45. Okay. Um, a cool thing about GT Metrics is when you click on the History tab, it's going to show you a history of your scans, so you can kind of keep an eye on that, um, as well as your request counts um, and your page speed and why uh, slow scores. Okay, so for now, uh, the big takeaway message is just by disabling that, my load time has already been cut down by probably forty percent, as well as my number of requests uh, to the server. Um, so my next thing that I want to focus on is going to be driving this total page size down. And as we saw in the waterfall report, this is mainly being generated from the images. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is go back to my dashboard. Um, and I already have, um, I believe, short pixeled installed. But in the event that you don't, what you do is you go to plugins. And we're gonna search for short pixel. And I will make a note that what I'm gonna be using short pixel for is to optimize these images. There's a lot of ways you can optimize uh, photo image sizes. You can do this in Photoshop. Um, you can do this through a number of other compression tools. If you're using Mac, there's a lot of apps in the App Store that will help you compress ping and JPEG images. Same with Windows, yada, yada, yada. Um, just for the sake of ease uh, and to streamline a lot of things, I'm going to use short pixel. I'm going to activate it. And since this is a demo site, I really don't have a lot of images in my media library. So it's going to be super easy for me to quickly optimize everything. Now once you have a chance to install short pixel and activate it, um, you can go ahead and run its bulk optimization process. 
I've actually already started it on this site, and since I don't have that many images, it's not going to take too long to do. Um, and you can notice already by looking at this, it's doing an amazing job compressing the file sizes of these images. Actually, right now, the average reduction uh, is almost 89%. So this is going to help take that 28 megabyte page size and really shave it down uh, to a tenth of that, um, ideally a lot less than that. So I'm going to let this run for a bit. And once it's completed, I'm going to go ahead and refresh my GT, uh, GT metric scan uh, to get some of the latest numbers on this page. Okay, so now my short pixel uh, bulk optimization is completed. And um, right here, if I hover over the summary, we can take a quick preliminary look at um, the stats of the compression. So it went through and optimized not only the images, but processed all of the thumbnails and optimized those as well. So we have an average optimization uh, percentage of 87% space saved uh, with a total amount of 29.84 megabytes uh, being compressed down or uh, shaved off. Okay. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do now that this has been completed, I'm going to go ahead and go back to this page. And just as a check, I'm going to refresh it. Just want to make sure that this page looks exactly the same. And you'll notice now that I've refreshed it and go down it, nothing has really changed. Okay. Um, what I'm going to now do is run a new GT metric scan on this page just so I can get the latest stats um, on this page. Now while that's running, let's go ahead and do a brief recap of kind of our GT metric scans and the steps that we've taken up to here. So this is our scan that we took initially before doing any optimization. This is before we use the asset cleanup plugin to remove unneeded scripts. So you can see that we have a fully loaded time of 7.2 seconds, total page size of 28 megabytes, uh, with 71 server requests. And then what we did, if you remember, is we used the asset manager or cleanup plugin to disable everything that we didn't really need, and we ran another scan. And when we did that, our load time went down to 4.7 seconds from 7.1 or 2, uh, down to 4.7, and from 71 server requests to 45. Okay. And now what we did is we compressed the images, so now this total page size should also be way lower uh, than 28 megabytes. So let's go ahead and take a look at our latest performance scan, and indeed it is. So um, our fully loaded time is 4.1 seconds now, which definitely we're going to still improve a bit on. Total page size is way down, so it went from 28 megabytes to 6 megabytes with uh, 45 server requests. And so when I take a look at previously, right this is the after and you'll notice that in this particular iteration of optimization our y slow score is now green um, I didn't even look at the y slow score tab this entire time um, so it's not actively something that I went to optimize for I merely just wanted to eliminate a lot of fat uh, that WordPress and its plugins bring um, and in doing that it brought my y slow score up to a B Okay, so now let's dig a little bit deeper and take a look at this page speed score and how I can actually um, help improve the performance of my site. So they're saying under the page speed tab that there's a couple of images that could be um, scaled. And when I look at it, yeah, I mean the picture of the dog, its dimensions are like 5300 by 3900 and that's ridiculous especially because that particular image is not a light box image it's just merely a small image on the site right uh, and it'll also show you what you can scale it down to normally this is the dimension of the image as it currently is being displayed on your site um, this is just calculating the difference in sizing right so basically this is GT metrics way of saying, hey man, why are you trying to load this massive file image when you only need it to be this size? Okay, and fair enough. That's um, something that I should definitely do as a good practice. When I look at the defer parsing of JavaScript, you'll notice that a lot of this is actually being driven by the YouTube in the, uh, video embed at the bottom of the page. And so I know that that's something that I'm also gonna wanna take a look at, okay? So now let's go to the actual page. And for this particular um, set of fixes, let's go ahead and open it up with Elementor. 
and edit it with Elementor. Awesome. Okay. So, you know, as per this GT metric scan, I'm going to take a look at the image of the dog and the image right below it. Okay. So this image right here, when I click on it, you'll notice image size is set to full. And what I can do instead is use this opportunity to shrink this uh, or set a definition or define dimension for this image. Okay. Um, by default, what I can do is let's go ahead and test out medium. It's a little bit slower than I would like it to be. I want it to be a size up. Uh, and you'll notice that Elementor has a variety of presets. And so you can also look at medium large. And when I see that, that's exactly the size that I want. Um, so I'm going to actually, instead of using full, I'm going to click it to medium large, uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and click update. Okay. And when I scroll down, uh, this is also an image that I want to um, optimize as well. So when I edit the image, you'll notice this also says image size full. So I'm going to change that. And take a look at the dimensions. If I look at medium again, this is a little bit smaller than I want. Um, if I go to medium large, that actually fits in there just fine. Um, alternatively, what you can do is actually resize this image uh, through the media library or natively. So if you just absolutely don't need a version of this image to be larger than your thumbnail, then you can just have a thumbnail version of that image being served. Okay, for now, what I'm going to do is set it to medium large, uh, and I'm going to update that in Elementor. Awesome. Now that that has been updated, um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is load this page. So I have um, the most up to date version loaded up. And if you're using a caching plugin or um, you have server level cache, you can go ahead and clear that. This also helps regenerate um, this page so that when you run a GT metric scan, um, you'll be able to get um, the latest iteration of everything. And so I just went ahead and run another scan on this page. And cool thing about this, you'll notice page speed is way up. It's now showing a B. Uh, fully loaded time is 2.8 seconds, okay, with a total page size of 1.22 megabytes. So already a drastic improvement. Um, at this particular moment, I still am not using any um, caching plugin, so I'm not using WP fastest cache. I'm not using Autopomize or any of those. Um, this is just using the Asset Cleaner uh, and a really good hosting plan. <laughs> um, when I take a look at the page speed insights, looking at the JavaScript recommendations, it's still pointing to the YouTube video uh, that I've embedded at the bottom. We're going to go ahead and optimize that next to um, hopefully uh, help our site load even faster. So I'm going to go back to um, our page in Elementor. Let's go to that video. Okay, so I've got, um, of course, the infamous Rickle video at the bottom. Uh, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and edit this video. When I come down to the video settings, I mean, it's not auto-playing or anything like that, but you'll notice there's an option here called Image Overlay. And by default, this is deactivated. Okay. Um, you'll want to activate this. This is one of my tricks. There's a lot of other ways you can optimize um, YouTube video embeds. There's a couple of plugins for that, but you know my original thing is I don't want to add additional plugins for features when there's other ways around it. And Elementor has a couple of features that really help out with this. So I'm going to use the image overlay function, and um, you can choose an image here. Okay, because I don't want obviously my Rick Roll video just to be chilling out here. I'm going to go ahead and put a cover image on it. Um, so let's go ahead and go to our media library. And I already have a, uh, an image in here that I'm going to use. And it says, if you like Divi, click here. Okay. Um, so that'll go there. Now, another trick that you can do is um, you can take a screenshot of or a thumbnail of the actual video uh, image, the player image. So basically it's going to look exactly the same. Uh, it's just now going to load that image instead of trying to load all the default YouTube JavaScript initially. Okay. And as mentioned before, since this YouTube video is embedded all the way at the bottom of the page and it's really not visible upon 
um, the first load. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and activate lazy load because I'm totally okay with that. Um, and of course, image size, you can set that to a more scaled version. For now, I'm just going to leave it as full. I'm going to optimize, or excuse me, update Elementor and save this version. Before I actually go on to the next step, what I'm actually going to do before we move on is um, for the image size for the video overlay, um, I'm just going to go ahead and set that to medium large. Um, for me, it doesn't really matter because I've natively sized this image properly. So even if I set it to full, it won't go past a certain uh, size. And um, currently, I remember whenever I click on this, this is what happens. It just loads the video in the same frame, right? And I actually, for this particular video, I think that the Divi users out there are going to appreciate a light box a little bit more. So I will activate that. So now, whenever they click on it, boom. That's the effect that I'm actually going for. Um, I'm going to go ahead and update this and cover a couple of um, details out of here. So image overlay, we've activated that to show, we've assigned an image for it. And again, um, you can either set this to a different image like we did, or you can take a screenshot of that YouTube video player and it'll look exactly the same, right? Um, you can then activate lazy load depending on the positioning of your video player. For me, it was at the very bottom of the page, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I can activate lazy load. Uh, and then I scaled the image um, just for details like I added a play icon. Um, you can actually deactivate that and actually I'm just going to go ahead and deactivate for now. Um, and then Lightbox uh, is going to enable this video to pop up. That's optional. I like it purely for effect in this example. So I'm going to go ahead and update this. Now that that's updated, um, remember that uh, you know our old GT metric scan, we're about 2.8 seconds. Uh, page speed score of 85 uh, C on the Y slow but, but um, on the recommendations out of the page speed really the big thing that we had to address was this YouTube embed and the steps that we just did should have helped out with that so what I'm going to go ahead and do is run a retest And look at that, guys. Um, awesome. I have now have a fully loaded time of under one second. It's actually 0.8 seconds. The total page size is down to 446 kilobytes uh, with 23 requests to the server. I mean, this is super lightweight now. Um, page speed score maxed out at 100. And keep in mind, all the way until now even, um, I don't have a plugin uh, for caching or anything like that. So we're not using WP Fastest Cache, we're not using Autopomize, uh, we're not using any. All we did was focus on a few basic performance uh, fundamentals and um, optimize a couple of things. You know, we went ahead and optimized, compressed our images we identified what was actually needed on a page and eliminated everything else that wasn't. Um, and in certain instances, for example, like the YouTube video, we identified if there was anywhere uh, where a script was being loaded where it didn't necessarily need to be. Uh, and in that particular regard, I mean, sometimes that requires you thinking about your website from a UI perspective and, and how the end users actually interact with that, right? Um, but you know, ultimately, what we did was instead of chasing page speed scores or simply installing uh, a caching plugin, um, you know, we went after shrinking down that load time and shrinking down the number of server requests and the total page size. And by doing that, notice we've got a max of 100% on the page speed score, so that took care of itself. Um, if this tutorial was helpful. I'd love to hear from you guys, uh, and if you made it this far, first off, congratulations, because this is a much longer video than I think any of us anticipated it being. Um, in the comments below, I'd love to see some before and afters. Um, I'd love to see uh, how your guys' sites perform before going through this tutorial and what they look like afterwards, and especially if you're using caching plugins or performance plugins. 
uh, include which ones you're using because uh, that's also helpful uh, and I'd love to learn more about that. Um, again, my name is Charles from Sprouted Web and thanks so much for joining me today on this tutorial. Have a great day.